All right, guys, welcome back to Spitting Bars. Micah is about to put the southern kingdom of Israel on blast. We've been using this helpful list from Dr. Tim Laniac. The three things, three eyes, helpful to remember what the prophets come to point out. Idolatry, injustice, and infidelity to God's covenant. Which we'll get back to that theme in just a moment. But let's read the text for the day. This is chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Drop a beat. Then I said, listen, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel. Should you not embrace justice? You who hate good? and love evil, who tear the skin from my people and the flesh from their bones, who eat my people's flesh, strip off their skin and break their bones into pieces, who chop them up like meat for the pan, like flesh for the pot, then they will cry out to the Lord, but he will not answer them. At that time he will hide his face from them because of the evil they have done. This is what the Lord says. As for the prophets who lead my people astray, they proclaim peace if they have something to eat, but prepare to wage war against anyone who refuses to feed them. Therefore, night will come over you without visions and darkness, without divination. The sun will set for the prophets, and the day will go dark for them. The seers will be ashamed and the diviners disgraced. They will all cover their faces because there is no answer from God. But it's for me. I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression, to Israel his sin. Hear this, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel, who despise justice and distort all that is right, who build Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with wickedness. Her leaders judge for a bribe, her priests teach for a price, and her prophets tell fortunes for money. Yet they look for the Lord's support and say, is not the Lord among us? No disaster will come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion will be plowed like a field. Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble. The Temple Hill, a mound overgrown with thickets. Oh boy, uh, maybe I should have given you a warning before diving into that. That text is strong. We're going to talk about his rhetoric in just a moment. But this infidelity piece, like why such high expectations for these people? Remember, they're on a covenant mission that, that God, through the descendants of, of Abraham, through the people he rescued from slavery in Egypt, this group of people called the Israelites, they were a covenant people. They, 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 they worshiped exclusively uh, the one true God in order to show the world what he was like and to, to carry a, across God's redemptive motives for the, the world, to bless all peoples through this group. And, and what did we find them doing? Terrible, terrible things to each other. How would the covenant people of God, a God of love and mercy and justice, be revealed through people who were devouring each other, as Micah's metaphor goes? So that's, what, that's what's at stake here. So that's why his rhetoric is so charged. It's not surprising to find harsh rhetoric in the prophets. <laughs> They really use their, their pointed tongue as they spit bars, speaking to people in power, to kings, to rulers, to judges about the situation they find themselves in, seeking to jar them into a response of repentance. We see this different rhetorical strategies. How do you get someone's attention? that needs to be corrected. Well, let's look at some other prophets beside Micah to kind of orient ourselves in this, this world of, of prophetic indictment, prophetic discourse. Remember Amos shamelessly called people cows, the, the cows of Bashan, talking to women in Samaria. Joel, uh, he uses some evocative image of locust swarms to get people's attention about impending uh, issues with Assyria. Ezekiel, he has these fantastic visions along with other prophets too, but Ezekiel, these strange visions that to, to, uh, God gives him to get the people's attention. Isaiah, man, his rhetoric was really interesting. He walked around naked. Yeah, yeah, medium is a message. He, he, he really got people's attention. And Micah is using this image of cannibalism, uh, uh, of cooking people, of, 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 of preparing a meal. It's, just, it's evocative. It's, it's strong rhetoric. It's not literal. But he's saying what they're doing is equivalent 
to devouring those in need. This is some sharp rhetoric. When we're reading the scriptures and we're reading Micah and we're trying to understand what is God trying to do through this book, we must keep in mind the goal. What is Micah's goal in using such harsh rhetoric in his poetry? Well, you see, prophets point out the wrongs so that people would repent and join God in making things right. Repentance, this word for turning. If they would see the, the, the calamity, the, the, the disaster that they're participating in, if, if their eyes would be opened to it, they would run to God for renewal and step away and put down things that are wrong. But it seems like, just as the metaphor goes about devouring one another, it seems like their taste for what is right is off. And that's exactly why Micah speaks so harshly. So let's take a closer look at a couple of verses here. He asked them rhetorically, should you not embrace justice? You who hate good and love evil, that word justice, this is something we should highlight here. He is speaking to the judges, people who should stand up for what is right and wrong and actually mediate these things. He's talking to leaders. He's speaking a harsh word to people in power, to people in charge, the people who are tasked with caring about other people. He's saying they don't they're not, they're, they don't have the taste for it. They, they, they hate what is good and they love what is evil. This is, this is totally skewed. If justice, if, if mishpat in the Hebrew, the, 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 the making of, of good decisions that are right in the world, that are right by God's standards, that advocate for shalom, as we're going to get to in a moment, these things that are peace, uh, peace giving and, and bring about wholeness, they're not craving them. They're craving brokenness. Self-serving brokenness is not the way to lead a group of people. The leaders need to hear this abrasive message from, from Micah. We'll come back to this poor taste in what is good and what is evil. Let's keep reading. We'll highlight this verse. As for the prophets who lead my people astray, they proclaim peace, this shalom, if they have something to eat, but prepare to wage war against anyone who refuses to feed them this metaphor of of hunger it, it, he's still laying this out and he's saying that when things are good the people say hey everything's good when i'm fed when i'm taken care of when my needs are met it's all good i think it's shalom but when their needs are not met these leaders these prophets that are supposed to minister to the people he turns his attention to them they they want to uh, wage war with people. So it's a thin peace, right? It's a peace depending on their comfort. Is, is that what shalom is? Shalom is, is self-serving? Do you see how their tastes are compromised? You know, we have, we have a study session on this. If you want to go back to our Death and All of His Friends series on the Youth Connected uh, page, Image Corruption Session 2 deals with this, this poor taste, this fruit of moral autonomy. When we really diagnose what sin is, we want to determine what is good and evil for ourselves. And, and people do this poorly. This is, this is how we understand uh, what the fall narrative, Adam and Eve eating from the tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil, they actually decided to call the shots on what is good and evil. And what we learned is, is that when we do that, when we don't trust what, is, what God says is good is good, our, our tastes are actually compromised. And just as Micah painfully illustrates, what, what we want, the hunger in us, is compromised. And this needs to be called out in leaders as Micah is doing. Let's just re-engage that world from the help of Leslie Allen. Here he lays the blame at the doors of the courts for failing to check them. Those who should have been the watchdogs of public welfare and guardians of the old morality have betrayed their trust. They comprise instead a power for evil, aiding and abetting criminals against society. This is why Micah puts them on blast. Remember, Micah, as Carol Kaminsky says, is, a, is about a miscarriage of justice. And the people that are in charge of making sure that other people experience shalom 
are acting out of self-interest and they are devouring those in need. So let's take a look at what justice and shalom are not. Flourishing evil is not justice. Fickle peace is not shalom. And so we, like Micah, can use the rhetoric at our disposal to call out the wrongs around us, to hold people in power accountable. Now, our day, we're not in a covenant nation, a nation that was explicitly uh, accepting a, a task, a mission from God. The church, the era of the church, we as disciples of Jesus really see the, the project, the mission, the covenant of God play out through this, this New Testament believer uh, body that's uh, intercultural, intertribal, inter-era. And, and, and so we find ourselves in, in a bit of a different situation. But the principles remain that God's people, because we have the heart of God, we see the world through his love that we need to be about the work of advocating for those whose leaders have failed them where we see injustices where we see people devouring those in need when we see a thin peace christians can carry across the concerns of god by speaking up for them so how do we do this today how do we speak up for those who are experiencing injustice in the world around us today. Let's challenge ourselves to reflect on Micah's abrasive rhetoric and his understanding of how to get people's attention and turn them towards what is good and caring for those in need and those who are experiencing injustice and turn towards a real shalom. I hope this has been helpful. We'll see you next time on Spitting Bars. Godspeed.